I am my own favorite person. It's your boy, Nate. I read books because reading is sexy, and if you're not reading, you're not sexy. Here to do the mid-year freakout tag. Okay, let's, let's jump into it. So, my Goodreads challenge, 52 books. That's a book a week, but, you know, the, the actual challenge it, internally is a hundred books. I'm gonna try and do it. We're almost there. So I think I think we can do it. I think we can do it with ease um, because we're at 74 books a boot. There are like maybe t three or four DNFs. I still count those as reading because, you know, I spent time with them. On the Goodreads, I've left very thorough reviews Therefore, the experience of reading them has been completed. Therefore, though incomplete reads, they've been read. Okay, but here to do the mid-year freakout tag, let's go in. List of questions, let's go. Number one, best book you've read so far this year. I, you're probably tired of hearing about it, but I haven't talked about it in a long while. It's YN, Your Name by Esther Yee. I just think it's everything I enjoy in a book. It's so heady. Spirals. It might have gotten clunky in the end, but given that it's a debut and the first half was very strong, I think everything sort of evens out. It's just everything I love. Everything I love feels like a fresh voice as well. Bonkers, bonkers the book is. Okay, two. Best sequel you've read so far this year technically not a sequel, but this year I read Near to the Wild Heart by Clarice Lispector, her debut novel, and then I also read A Breath of Life. I want to categorize them as sort of um, a good Lispector pairing, given that Near to the Wild Heart was her first book, written at 23, and A Breath of Life was written near the very end of her days. She wrote it literally as she was dying. So it's this really beautiful, like, birth and death book pairing. Both of them share similar thoughts about life, death, creation, the creator, what it means to produce art, what comes from within, and whatever that thing that is within you, where does that come from? There's something before birth, and Lispector is constantly trying to claw at whatever that is and trying to get to the very root of everything. But yes, A Breath of Life, a sequel, I wanna say, to Near to the Wild Heart and made me sob, made me uh, think about where I'm headed in my own life. I read it on the plane as I was leaving Korea and coming back home to LA and <laughs> boy, oh boy, dude. If you wanna, if you wanna go through some stuff, trap yourself in a hunk of metal all the way up in the sky with the Lispector book. And uh, Breath of Life really did it for me. Yeah, I, uh, I kinda, kinda went crazy on the plane. Okay, number three. New release you haven't read yet, but want to. I have it here. We, we got Rouge by Mono Wad. I've heard many fun things about, what is it, Bunny? And I think it's, I think it's time. It, it's time to start Mono Wad, and I'm gonna do it with this new ARC. This is out September 12th by Mary Sue Rucci Books. But yes, I don't wanna know what it's about. Yeah, I, I'm gonna hop into it blind, and, and yeah, I'll let you know. This is getting its own separate vlog, I believe, so beg for it, beg for it. Rouge, Monowad. Okay, number four. 
most anticipated release for the second half of the year. Guess what? I, I've got it. Tell me how I have, like, this is crazy, y'all. This is crazy, it's crazy. I've been meaning to read Zadie Smith for a really long while. And I, I was just like, no, no, because it's always that book that's always at Goodwill. So it's just one of those books that you constantly keep saying, I'll get to it, I'll get to it. We're, we're here now with her new release, The Fraud. Probably not the best place to start with Zadie Smith, but I've heard some interesting things about this. This is out by Hamish Hamilton, an imprint of Penguin Books, out September 7th. Yes, the fraud, Zadie Smith. Cannot wait to dip into this big baddie. Yeah. Okay, number five, biggest disappointment. It's gonna have to go to Chelsea Girls by Eileen Miles. Yeah, it wasn't what I thought it was. I thought it was this like great lesbian, hot New York in the 70s and 80s. And it just, just didn't hit for me, I think. Miles lacked sort of an emotional distance from the experiences that they wrote about. And I, I think they required sort of that veil, that gloss of uh, emotional distance in order to strengthen the writing. I love their poetry, but I did not love this. And I'll also be reading another Miles with Bibliosophie in August. So maybe maybe that'll turn my th my thoughts and feelings about Miles around. Chelsea Girls, Eileen Miles. Yes, they just felt like, the experience of reading this feels like you're at a table with a friend of friends, with their friends, and they're just telling inside stories and laughing about all the inside jokes. And you kind of laugh, you kind of don't, you want to leave but you're there and yeah, you just feel incredibly disconnected with most of the stories here and yeah, biggest disappointment. Sorry. Okay, number six, biggest surprise. I mean, not a surprise given who this is, but it's Alexander Chi's How to Write an Autobiographical Novel. I didn't expect to get so emotional over this, and I think that's where the big surprise comes from. Uh, given that I'm a writer, Blech. ugh, gross. I know. I I can't admit that I'm a writer ever. I I hate admitting that, but I do have a book out. Links down below. Adolescence leaves. Pick it up, cause I I make no money. <laughs> I have no money. Um. Yeah, chi just talks about writing and how to write from uh, personal experience and just made me feel a bit more comfortable about who I am and maybe comfortable feeling that, yeah, I, I can call myself a writer. It's okay. It feels odd still at times, but I, I don't know. I think there was just this like <laughs> hidden emotional lump inside me and this uncovered it and squeezed it a bit and I think it burst, it burst. Um, so I thank Chi for that very much, but Trek's sort of the queer history of Chi um, as a, a hot youngin and him as a, a plater, as a, at a catering service, um, him as a writer, his travel broad experiences, and roses, oh god, the roses. Yeah, just these little, little details that made him who he is today. Enjoyed this a lot. Number seven, favorite new author debut or new to you, to me. I'm gonna start, I have two. I'm gonna start with Earth Angel by Madeleine Cash. She has, yes, a magazine out, Clash Mag, and she's just so, fucking funny. Like, I had such a blast with this. Uh, like, I, I laughed, and I know I can go back 
to this collection and laugh again. She's just so funny. I, yeah, probably the funniest book I've read in a really long time since perhaps like Sedaris or something. Collection of short stories, Earth Angel, just Nintendogs, Raining Frogs, everything. It's, it's everything. And uh, she's such a skilled writer. And let me tell you, like writing humor is incredibly difficult, but she knows her punchlines. They're crafted almost strategically and it's everything I could hope to achieve if I'm ever trying to be funny in my own writing. But yes, Earth Angel, Madeline Cash. Uh, I can't wait to see what else she puts out. But Clash Mag is super cool. I'll leave, I'll leave the link down below, but they always feature like a bunch of cool writers and I, I wanna pick up an issue eventually. My other favorite new author, Melissa Broder. Melissa Broder, I was wonderfully gifted um, The Pisces by Modern Ajima. Yena, thank you. Saranghe. This, I read on the plane and just had such a hoot. It was funny. Like, Broder is so funny and horny and like very strange. And after I finished this, I, I wanted more Broder. And I was gonna read Milk Fed, but then this came along, Death Valley. This is out by Scribner, September 26th. And this was, this took me by surprise, given that while I was reeling for um, more Broder, I was listening to Eating Alone in My Car, um, her podcast, and hearing how honest she is about her feelings and just who she is, and like reading her fiction as well has just added this like encompassing love for her. And yeah, I just, I think she's doing great work. It's great. Oh yes, and then I recently finished Milk Fed, which I, I absolutely loved. And I think my favorite out of the bunch, Resonant, Resonant. I just love um, how honest she writes about sex, feelings, and all reworked from her own personal life. It's, it's great. Melissa Broder, I love her. Okay, number eight, newest fictional crush. You know, it's summer and uh, my summer affair uh, goes to Motherfucker Land by Ed Lin. We got a boy named Sean in here. He, he's kind of a dipshit, but he works at a hot dog stand and I, I, I don't know, I, there's something just so mundane yet kind of beautiful about just crushing on like the guy at the, the, the boba shop or the guy at the, the in and out his little red hat, the, the apron, the white shirt, just something about a hottie working in a very like commonplace summer job just does it for me. Mad crushed on Sean from Motherfucker Land and he's he's kind of a loser, a slacker, but that's what I love. Kind of like Mac DeMarco, you know? He's a major slacker and I mean, he doesn't, he's not hot. He's like kind of fugly, but <laughs> I don't know. I just, I think it's the aesthetic. It's when a character's aesthetic overrides their entire being. You're just like, aha, I see, I see. And that's, that's what we got here. Sean is charming. He's a teenager coming out of jail for marijuana possession and is trying to understand the adult world as he's just surrounded by them, which is ironic given that they are the most childish characters in the book. But yes, motherfucker land, Ed Lin. This was a cute, Dog Days read. Yeah. Number nine, newest favorite character. I've got two for this one. We've got Kumbok from Whale by Ton Yong Kwan. She's just girl boss in like ancient Korea. And I, I vibed with like pfft. role model Kumbok. Like she is 
major girl boss. She opened like three, four different businesses and she, she did everything. She did, everything happened to her and she did everything. And that's, that's why I love her. And, ooh, and she takes an interesting turn um, halfway through the book and I won't spoil that, but like she literally does everything. And how can you not love when someone is, you know, trying to do the most, you know, making full of life. Yes. Favorite character also goes to Olga from The Days of Abandonment by Elena Ferrante. And oh my gosh, Yena again gifted me this. <laughs> Yena's got the good, the good Rex, so yeah. I just love how unhinged Olga is because she's, she's nuts. She is reeling from an affair. Her husband cheats on her and she, she's like questions everything, the validity of everything. Not just her, but her life and life itself. She reels and reels and reels. And I just read this at a very reeling time. And yeah, I, I, we, we hit it off together. Like I felt her, like we, we were the same. And that is why she's, she's a favorite because I am my own favorite person. Number 10, book that made you cry. Sorry, going to recycle and say how to write an autobiographical novel. Yeah, I, just like by the very last page, I really thought about like the choices I've made as a creative writing student, thinking a lot about getting an MFA, if like I thought about writing as seriously as I did when I was much younger, and it's still something that, like, oh, you have these books that work with uh, 26 letters rearranged in a way to evoke emotion. And it's incredible that you can feel stuff <laughs> from these books. And that's why this channel exists. That's why my novella Adolescent Sleeve exists. That's why my future works exist. And that's why I exist. It's crazy. It's crazy. And just all of those feelings about writing just uh, came in a rush for me in this. Number 11, book that made me happy. Uh, we already talked about it, recycling, but Earth Angel, Madeline Cash. There's a picture of me that my friend took I was waiting for him at a cafe and I didn't even know he had like come up and take a, taken a picture of me because I was literally like either laughing or smiling because I was just having such a good time with this. But yeah, it's just so funny. The stories in here, laugh out loud, good, good stuff. Okay, number 12, most beautiful book you have acquired this year. I don't know why this, just uh, came to mind first, but it's Tom Lake by Ann Patchett. This is out by Harper, August 1st. And it's just the flowers. I don't, I don't know what it is. It's just these like dainty, gentle, little white flowers. And yeah, <laughs> I, I don't know. It's like my, my own little garden right here in my hands. Yeah, and I, I, I don't know why. I don't know why, but yeah. Tom Lake, Ann Patchett. Okay, last question, we're here. What books do you need to read before the end of the year? Well, mostly like my major NetGalley checklist, list them in order of publication. I have a notion that just like has all of them. All on NetGalley, Digital ARCs, but it's People Collide by Isle McElroy, Blackouts by Justin Torres, Normal Women by Ainsley Hogarth, Same Bed, Different Dreams by Ed Park, The Tatami Time Machine Blues by Tomihiko Morimi, 
Day by Michael Cunningham, Come and Get It by Kylie Reed, The Fetishist by Catherine Min, Green Dot, Madeline Gray, and I'm pretty sure there will be even more ARCs that'll collect and collect. But I really wanted to get more into Iris Murdoch, currently doing the Sacred and Profane Love Machine with Cat from Cat's Field Notes. And it's it's great, good, good stuff. Like Murdoch is such a good writer in that her prose is wonderful. The internal questions that occur for the characters make you even think about your own life. And it's funny too, she's wicked. And I, I've been enjoying this. And then I also have her, An Accidental Man. I think doing two Murdochs will be good for the year. And I think it was earlier this year when I was in LA, I had a chance to go to the Hammer Museum and go to the Didion exhibit curated by Hilton Alls. I, I've, I don't know, Didion has always been just a very personal favorite of mine. Your magical thinking really helped me um, go through it all <laughs> with much uh, TLC. And then from there, I've just appreciated her as a major stylist. I look at her work a lot, even for my own writing. If um, I'm ever in a reading slump, um, she's just someone I constantly return to, but I only uh, read the same book. So I want to, to, to read the rest of her work. And here we have all of the vintage international editions of her work. So uh, a bit ambitious, but I think for fall, I'm going to do, um, a lot of, a lot of Didion. So yes, very, very excited to get to these. I love her. I love her. That's it. That is the mid-year freakout tag. Now time to tag some people. Ooh, okay. Let's see. I want to tag Yena, Modern Ajima, because... Homegirl reads a bunch. Like, I wish I could read as fast as she does, and I don't know how she does it. Every time I see a wrap up, I'm just like, oh my God, how? So she probably has a major, super, uber good, yummy list. Pato, Pato as well, Tag and Pato. I know they have read a bunch as well. Would like to know their, what they're, how they're doing. Um, should be good. I want to tag Reba from Reba Reads. Girl, you've been quiet. I want a video. Give it to me. Nad loves to read. Girl, you've also been quiet. Let's go. Let's go. Let let us know. Let us know the good bits of uh, your reading world, ATM. I want to tag Cat because I recently saw that she was reading the Pisces. Very curious to know how she feels about Broder. And we're doing, yeah, Iris Murdoch together. So very, very curious. And I'll throw in Charles, Charles and Kieran. Let me know how your reading life is going. Yes, let the good people know. Who else am I missing? I know I'm missing somebody. Well, okay, <laughs> if, if, I, if I didn't, tag you, or I'll probably tag you down below. Sorry if I didn't mention your name, but yeah, let, let me know. Let me know. I'll have, I'll have you down to below tagged. And yeah, I would, would like to know how your reading is done. Also, if you've watched this video and you're here, made it this far, you've also been unofficially tagged and like link my name. Like um, you can say Nathan tagged me. Because I did. I did. Yeah. Let's go, people. We're doing the good work as booktubers and spreading the readership. God. <laughs> you can probably tell how I lead meetings at work. Um, okay. 
before this video gets obnoxiously long, be well, do good work, keep in touch.